pregunta. Buenos días, mis amigo. Uh, hoy hablo del anticristo. So there's this movie left behind, and the latest one, latest and greatest, is the rise of the antichrist. All right, and I've not seen this. I, I might watch it someday, but man, oh man, these—it's like watching Superman. I don't like Superman. I don't like Batman. I don't like Robin. I don't like any of them. But, uh, very popular. And what's interesting to me is all these people, all these people, preacher after preacher, they're preaching as if these movies are the Bible, the Word of God. It's incredible. Now, it shouldn't be surprising because, you know, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Jesus warns us over and over that there's going to be deceivers greater than ever before in the last time. All right, and I mean all these guys, they're all preaching left behind, every single one of them. It's incredible. Now, I haven't gone over uh, this guy too much here. Uh, he's got some interesting stuff, but um, most of these guys, almost all of them, are teaching this idea that there are going to be millions of people vanish, they're going to be raptured out, and then there's going to be a seven year tribulation followed by a thousand years of peace, and then at the end. Uh, apparently, God's going to send fire down and destroy everybody. I, I don't know, it doesn't make sense, and I can't explain uh, something that is illogical and not supported by the Bible, but that's we're going to tackle a little bit here. Alright, so I want to talk about the Antichrist specifically. So this is, uh, you know, very revealing. <laughs> if you don't know... Who the Antichrist is, and if you don't know the Bible, you know, hey, just say, oh, that's going to happen in the future. All right, so that's what the futurists do. They don't have any understanding. So, uh, where you know, some people will say, oh, it's all in the future. You know, you got Mormons who will just say, oh, you just got to pray about it. All right, and this is revealing uh, of people that don't understand the Bible and uh, you know most it's all it's mostly because they don't have faith they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands but um, you know it's it's just uh, uh, there's an aspect of uh, I don't think people read their Bible uh, I mean why would you read it if you didn't believe it so it kind of goes hand in hand but it's pretty apparent to me that people do not read their Bible and therefore uh, there's this opportunity for the devil to come in and to deceive and that's that's exactly what's going on here so um, piggybacking off of that let's go tackle this one first because right, I'm telling you the scripture is full of teachings relating to the Antichrist and of course if you don't read and don't believe the Bible you're not going to see it alright so the first place we're going to go to is 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 I'll let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition All right, hold that thought okay I want to draw a parallel here um, to what John says I mean the parallels are not all you have to do is be able to connect the dots but of course if you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands 
how in the world are you going to be able to connect the dots, right? All right, so 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrist, whereby we know that it is the last time. <clears throat> right, so let so uh, what's interesting here is that it's very apparent that everybody knew because they read the Old Testament that the Antichrist should come. All right, and it's uh, echoed here in Second Thessalonians two, and so let's sort of connect the dots I guess from this verse here uh, verse 4 who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God alright so we're going to piggyback on that and uh, draw a parallel to the Old Testament I'll see if I can find it um, right there Daniel 11 isn't that amazing how simple this stuff is but uh, first you gotta you know you gotta believe the Bible and then you've got to be able to connect the dots all right so Daniel 11 verse 36 and 37 and the king shall do according to his will now this is important because Daniel is talking about four beasts until the end of the world. All right, and so when he's talking about this particular king, he's talking about oh, let's do it this way. he's talking about the fourth beast, which is also the Antichrist of First John chapter two, and the son of perdition of Second Thessalonians two. All right, I mean you have to be able to connect the dots, and once you're able to connect the dots, it is crystal clear. Uh, I, I could have made this easier, but uh, right there it is. All right, Daniel's talking about four beasts, which are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. The first is the king of Babylon all right so when we read in Revelation 17 mystery Babylon this is in the spirit of the first king so we know Revelation 17 is talking about the fourth king uh, all right so when Daniel's talking about this king he's talking about the fourth king which is the Antichrist which is the son of perdition it's all the same thing all right. and the king shall do according to his will he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that that is determined shall be done neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. All right, so let's go back here. Uh, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he as God. so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God alright so there's an obvious connection here okay obvious connection now again I want to emphasize the importance of faith alright because without faith your eyes are blind you won't be able to see this you won't be able to connect the dots but uh, it's very obvious okay 
this is exactly parallel with that right, and um, could do this I guess Paul huh all right okay so let's connect another dot here let's see here all right so oh I know let's connect another dot with the book Isaiah right oh uh, what's that verse again Hold on a second. There we go. Uh, Isaiah 37 verse 16. Now this is obviously about God. Okay. This is God. O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwelleth between the cherubims. Thou art the God, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth thou hast made heaven and earth now think about that who has who sits between the cherubims who has made heaven and earth and Let's see if we can get an image. Oh, Google. Look at this, man. Boy, they tightened up their security, didn't they? That's incredible, huh? A couple of cute little angels. Huh? Huh? It's incredible, isn't it? Because I've done this a hundred times before. And this is not the results that I've gotten. Let me show you the results that used to appear. <laughs> These are the results that used to appear. Okay. Now we'll open this image up. Oh, goodness sake. Can you even see that? This, how is that possible? You can't even see. It's a little better, I guess. What do I gotta do? Expand this. There. See the cherubims? <laughs> you know who that is? O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwells between the cherubims. That dwells between the cherubims, who has made heaven and earth. Who exalts himself above all that is called who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God so that he as God sitteth in a temple of God showing himself that he is God that dwells between the cherubims that thou art the God thou art the God who has made heaven and earth who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. I mean, look at this. Couldn't be more obvious. I mean, I think even if he had a tattoo that said, I am God on his forehead, people would still not be able to see it. And this falls back to right here let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition so the son of perdition has only increased in power and fame and he's only increased because there's a falling away and that falling away is deception because people do not believe 
the Word of God. Just like what we read in Matthew 24, uh, when Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And of course, 2 Timothy 3, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So we connect the dots here that the falling away is directly related to unbelief and deception. Deception is the only fills the void left when there is no faith. Alright, so let's go to... Um, when Jesus says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth? Alright, so that's a great question. That's an unbelievable, incredible, amazing question. Because it suggests that, hey, there might not be hardly any believers at all and that's you know it's a, he says it uh, over and over again except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved now think about that if God allowed things to continue there would come a point where nobody would be saved and how is that possible by the deceptions of this world and the bottom line is what we're, we're seeing that today people are not believing the Bible that they hold in their hands it's incredible how many people want to go to foreign languages just like the Muslims do they want to point to a foreign language that they themselves don't even understand typically Muslims maybe some of them maybe maybe not doesn't matter you don't need to learn a foreign language to know what God says you don't need to rely on the serpent's concordance to, or the strong's concordance whatever you want to call it all you have to do is believe the Bible that you hold in your hands and it's quite evident that these um, the falling away all these verses are related to the fact that people are lacking faith today more so than ever before and because they're lacking faith there is this falling away that is the falling away and because people are lacking faith now the son of perdition is able to increase in power influence and fame all right and uh, you know uh, to let me talk about this a little bit little children it is the last time and as you've heard the Antichrist shall come even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time now as this relates to Daniel and the four beast okay it's interesting because this is when John wrote this this was at the beginning of the Roman Empire and the Roman Empire is obviously and clearly the fourth beast. Now, as we read in Revelation 17, the beast that was and is not and yet is, is the transition from the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church. All right. And so uh, Daniel talks about that as well. And that the fourth beast, oh, where am I? Okay. And that the fourth beast um, will be greater than all the other beasts. Okay. And the, the obvious reason is because there are so few people that are saved. And this goes back to what Jesus says. You can connect the dots all day long. It's incredible how simple the Bible is. It really is. But as the days of Noah were, so 
shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right. And then we know by knowing, you know, reading the Bible, that in the days of Noah, only eight people were saved. All right. Uh, I speculate 25 billion people were alive on the earth at that time. You got to remember it was a completely different world. People were living 12 times longer. People were living hundreds of years. Imagine uh, you're a woman, you're married to a man, and you are having a child essentially once every year for over a hundred years and your daughters are having children nearly once a year for hundreds of years by the time we get to the last days of Noah before the flood there had to have been billions and billions of people okay so I think it would be fair to say well there might have been nine million people nine billion people just like there is today I think that's fair because there certainly was a lot of violence back then just as there is today you know I don't know that abortion would have been a big deal back then I don't think it was I think this abomination of abortion is uh, relatively uh, unique to our time period and I, you know, I base that on just on simple logic, I guess. But then also, if we go to uh, Luke 23, Jesus says, "Don't mourn for me. Mourn for your daughters. For behold, the days come." Oh no. Where am I at? For behold, the days come when they shall say, Blessed are the barren. That's not good. All right, that, I don't know how people don't understand that. That's not a good thing when people say, Blessed are the barren. All right, and it's not a good thing when they say, Blessed are the wombs that never bear. That's not a good thing at all. And Jesus is saying, Weep for these daughters, these women during this time when these things are happening and come on man these things are happening right now I mean have you ever heard somebody say oh thank God I'm not pregnant or thank God she's not pregnant oh thank God I had my period you know or you know somebody gets pregnant and are you gonna keep it like as if that are you gonna kill your baby like that like that's a not a they say it as though it's not completely insane to ask that question hey are you gonna kill your kids it's just normal like no big deal hey are you gonna kill your child uh, these, these people are insane I mean the world that we're living in is utter insanity but because I, I, this has to be, this has to be the way it is. This is the way it's meant to all be played out. And we are under severe persecution. We are surrounded by deceivers. And we are attacked from every possible angle, every single day. And the worst part about it is, it's our children that are going after first by brainwashing them in school if they haven't killed them already you know if they somehow do make it through birth then they're put into the public school system where they're brainwashed with all these ideas that oppose the Word of God alright now okay so I think I've gone on long enough I think I was going to cover more about the Antichrist and how the Antichrist is here right now it's obviously the beast of Revelation it's the fourth beast of Daniel it's the son of perdition it is the Antichrist it's all the same thing and then of course um, I have to remind people that I really don't think people 
are able to see a whole lot but let me try to open your eyes here when Jesus says there shall arise false Christ he's talking about the Antichrist all right that's the Antichrist you think Jesus didn't know about the Antichrist come on man hey, that just for whatever reason that just burns my rear end when people imply that Jesus was ignorant I mean really that's what you're doing when you make this claim that there will be a tribulation period after the rapture of the saints of the elect you're making Jesus out to be a liar you're making him out to be ignorant because he never mentions this at all when he is asked of the end of the world all right, and also I think it's important to note that he's not describing things that are going to build up and lead up. He's telling us things that are going to happen, but it's not the end of the world. And then he tells us the end of the world. All right. And so when Jesus says there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, he's talking about Antichrist. In Revelation 17, there shall there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. This is talking about a succession of popes, and not one pope that was born with a tattoo on his head. It's a position of authority over the woman which is in the spirit of Babylon which is the fourth beast and the woman denotes a religious organization and the whore is a substitute wife not the true wife the substitute wife and the many waters that she sits on are peoples multitudes nations and tongues they are all over the world and this is a huge reason why the deception has gotten worse and worse and will continue to get worse and worse because there are many deceivers in the world today okay alright so uh, maybe I'll talk more about this in the future thanks for listening